Okay, here's another in our series of Chains of Reasoning short videos. We take a topic and we look to build a really good chain of reasoning to help score top marks for analysis. We really focus on this at Chidi Chiu. The exam reports are coming back crystal clear. They look for students to present their analysis as a chain of reasoning. And if they can, avoid jumping from a point straight to the outcome. There's oftentimes missing missing bits of the, of the link, which uh, the best students, they put in. Now, the key to this, everybody, is clarity, focus and structure. If you do that, you can write less in the exam and get more. Just basically aim to present some theory to develop the point you're making to a logical conclusion. Ideally, maybe four points in your chain of reasoning will be excellent. Once you've done your chain of reasoning, the evaluation should flow pretty quickly straight away. Let's look at uh, two examples of a chain of reasoning on this question, the macroeconomic effects of a falling price of crude oil. Here we go, two examples. Uh, notice how it, at the start I, I make it clear what type of country I'm referring to. So for oil exporting countries such as Norway, a fall in world prices causes a deterioration in their terms of trade. Macro concept there. This means that, that's a connective phrase, this means that the weighted index of their export prices divided by import prices has declined. So I'm defining a term and showing how it's measured. One consequence of this is that export revenues per oil barrel for, for Norway will fall, leading to a possible decline in their current account surplus. As a result, another connective phrase, the oil sector in Norway will contribute less to the growth of the Norwegian real GDP, whilst oil prices remain low. A fall in the terms of trade causes a drop in real living standards because Norway has to sell more oil for each unit of imports. And a slowdown in growth and a decline in real wages, especially in the oil sector, might then lead to a cyclical slowdown in the Norwegian economy and perhaps some disinflationary pressure. So for oil exporting countries, the risk is slower growth and perhaps some disinflation. Uh, the top left is the point. The uh, bottom left is the logical conclusion. But in between, I've drawn some connective phrases. For oil importing nations, such as the UK, a drop in the global price will cause a fall in costs in many industries. For example, application marks here, the cost of aviation fuel, or diesel used in logistics will probably drop, leading to a fall in operating costs. Connective phrase. This is likely to cause an outward shift of short-run aggregate supply. Can you visualise that in your minds in a diagram? And therefore a period of disinflationary pressure. Keep the paragraph going there. Disinflation is when the rate of inflation falls, for example, from 5% to 2%. As a result, the cost of living will, will rise at a slower annual rate. One macro effect of this drop in inflation is that if nominal wages grow faster than inflation, the real level of wages might start to pick up. And a rise in real wages in the labour market may then help to, st to stimulate an increase in consumer demand, consumer spending, and therefore higher aggregate demand. So for oil importing countries such as the UK, a fall in oil prices could actually be stimulatory for the UK economy. That chain of reasoning would automatically automatically kickstart in my mind an aggregate demand and supply diagram just to, to nail the point. But if the analysis is clear, it's very easy for the next paragraph to say, well, however, this effect depends on Y or there might be a countervailing change in X. In other words, if the analysis is really good, the evaluation will flow. In the exam, please, please don't waste words. Just be really clear, really focused, logical chains of reasoning can make a huge difference, an enormous difference to your exam score. So it's definitely worth practicing as many of these questions as you can, parts of questions, paragraphs ahead of the papers. Okay, good luck.